Hey everybody, Pat here from West Corners Custom Cycles. Welcome back to the Underground Garage. I want to welcome you all, as always, back to the channel. I want to thank all my subscribers. I want to invite you all to ring the bell, make comments, get notifications whenever we're putting up a new video. Uh, about three days ago, I put up a video on the build we're working on now. It's a 1970 Harley-Davidson Leggero, 65 cc's, just a tiny little bike. Uh, it is a road bike. Uh, check out the previous videos on it. You can see what it looks like. Anyway, last week um, I put up a video on the carburetor, tearing it apart, cleaning it. This video is the other half of that, getting it back together, adjusting it all up, tuning it up so when you put it back on the bike, it's good and ready to go. It'll start up and run down the road. Um, okay, without any further ado, let's get to the video. As always, don't forget, like and subscribe. Peace. Okay, everybody, we're back. Time to get this thing back together. Um, I got this thing all cleaned out, ran it all through the ultrasonic cleaner. Even after I got it out of the ultrasonic cleaner, I went back through, took my tool, repoked everything out. Uh, when I took it out of the ultrasonic cleaner, it blew it all out with compressed air. Um, so this thing is absolutely squeaky clean inside and out. Found out this float that I was telling you that the pin came out of the bottom was still stuck in the bottom of the, the float housing here. I was incorrect. On the MB24s, there is a, a pin and it's got to go down to a hole inside the bottom of this housing here and I actually went through and this is why I tell you to get the manual and the parts guide because if you look at the exploded version there's no needle in the bottom of this float so that tells me that that's supposed to be down in there and after I soaked it all with mineral spirits and everything got all the old crusty gas and everything out of there I could see that it didn't come out and that's why I looked at the exploded version and now you can see that Float goes up and down with no problem. Doesn't get doesn't get hung up. It drops right down in there and comes right back out. So that should be good. Also managed to save all four of the original gaskets without tearing them up. So I'm going to use them. And then I also told you the screen that went in this housing here was all corroded up. And I told you I was going to throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I also told you don't throw plastic stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner. Depends on what you're using for a solvent. I use a real mild solvent. It's just simple green and water. Um, nothing corrosive. So, But this turned out like brand new. So I'm going to reuse that also. So I don't think i got to order anything for this. Cleaned up the Baker Light cover for, I called this the, uh, the air cleaner. I think it's more of a spark arrestor than an air cleaner. I worked at a marina for a lot of years, and this looks just like what they put on the uh, on the boats on the carburetors, and they call it spark arrester. So, uh, the only the other thing I can tell you, this clamp that goes on the carburetor right here for holding the manifold on. To get this on and off, there's a little lip on the edge of it right here that you have to get this over, and the way to do that. As you take a screwdriver, stick it in the slot here, just kind of wiggle it open a little wider and wiggle it on there. You'll get it on there. And then it stays on there. It won't slide off. My recommendation, screw your manifold to the motor, get the carb all back together. And then when uh, you go to put the carb on the bike, that way you can make sure it's leveling where you want it. Because once you get this in here, it's not going to turn for you. It, they get in there and they are just super tight. I'm just giving you a heads up on that. I know that from when I did the 125 Del, Del Ordo carburetor. They got the same manifold setup. Okay, let's get this thing back together. I'm going to take the housing. Um, I guess we'll go with the float first. Drop the float down in there. Take the cap. Tell down with two screws. I'm going to take the old gasket, put it back on here, line it up with the holes. Okay. You're going to want to set this. When you set this on here, 
I know in the 125 one, it only went on one way. The screws are all set, but you're going to want to you're going to want to put it so that this uh, primer is on the outside and you can get to it. I don't think it'll fit around the other way. So that's all done. Take your two screws, put them down on either side. Tighten them down. Again, no Hercules on a carburetor. Tighten the stuff down, snug it. That's all you need. These are aluminum housing and steel screws. If you crank it down real hard, you're going to wind up cracking stuff. So you don't need it super, super tight. Okay. A little bit of a turn. And that's it. That's all you need. You hear that in there? You know your float's moving up and down free the way it should. Okay, next I'm going to take this piece. This is the piece that your fuel line hooks on to. It's also the piece that that screen I told you about goes down in. So you drop that down in there. Now there's going to be a gasket on both sides of this. Take your second gasket. Nope, wrong one. This one. Put it down on the housing. Like so. That's it. And you're going to take this without well, the screen falling out of it. Set it on top. Now, your third gasket, there's only four gaskets on this thing. Is going to go on the screw that holds that to the body of the carburetor. Slide it right down on the screw. Screw it in there. This is an 8 millimeter screw or 5 sixteenths if you don't have an 8 mil. <coughs> Excuse me. So now you have a gasket on the bottom of this housing right here and a gasket underneath the, the screw where it meets the housing. I'll just snug that up a little bit for now because once I get it on the bike, I'm going to see where that needs to be pointed. I pointed out before that when I had this fuel line on here, the clamp was holding this primer down. I want to make sure that's not going to be an issue. Another thing I found out was how to loosen these clamps. This little cotter pin looking thing here, you can crank it one way and it'll actually loosen that clamp and you crank it the other way, it'll tighten it up. I didn't think they were reusable. See, we're learning something together. That's why we watch the channel. Okay, anyway, um, now that I've got that on, let's see, what do I do next? Uh, I guess I can get this manifold clamp on there. through there and this is oh I got the wrong screw this little nut here is what goes on the back side of that it's got a flat spot on it so it doesn't spin when you're putting it on and off and you'll see the manifold is notched for that screw to go into just like so so the screw will go in from this side While it's still loose, let's see, it's going to go on the bike this way. So I'll put the screw to the outside. Like I said, you know, I'm going to take that screw out of there until I get that on. It'll make it easier. Take your screwdriver, wiggle it over the side, and watch. Spread it out. Okay, in theory, it should drop right back down on there. There it goes. 
Now we're on. Once it's on, it'll move. But, like I said, once you get this manifold in there down to the end of this collar here, it will not spin in there. So, put your manifold on the motor and then put your carb on to the manifold and you can make sure it's level. Make sure your bike's sitting level when you go to do that or adjust accordingly. All right brass jets got a brass jet that goes in here now like I said these brass jets I don't know how well you can see it there's holes that go all the way around these and there's one in the end make sure they're all cleaned out very good I blew everything out with compressed air this one here just tightens in there all the way down there's no adjustment to it just snug it up like I said no Hercules pull it off the end of the screwdriver that's good there. Um, that one that goes in here, which is this one. That one there. This one also turns all the way down in, just snug it up. that now this one now well you can see it I'll keep it over here in the light has five holes in it it's threaded on the bottom this one goes in the bottom of your carburetor this is actually what your uh, your metering pin that's in the slide goes down into so you want to just drop that this one's gonna go all the way down inside there Just gonna tighten it down, snug it up. All you need to do. Okay, that's snug. Now your last gasket goes on the brass 12 millimeter nut that we took out, and that's just the plug that goes over the, the top of that jet. So you put your gasket on there, turn it down, snug it up. Again, just snug it. Okay, now we're going to go to the two adjusting screws. These adjusting screws, I don't know how well you can see, one's longer than the other, one's fatter than the other. Springs are the same way. One's shorter, one's skinnier, one's longer, all that good stuff. So you can't mix them up. Take the shorter, fatter one, goes into the hole right next to the brass jet there, your main jet. Screw it down in, just get it in there a few turns. And then the other one goes right next to it. This is called your idle speed screw. They're actually calling this your um, throttle regulator, which is, um, they're saying it's the slide adjustment screw. And then your, uh, your mixture, like I told you before, is, is according to the metering pin in there and where you put the clip on it. I'm going to go back over adjustments in a minute here once we get this all back together. All right. I guess for the most part, it is back together. Except for putting the manifold on, putting the spark arrestor back on, which I will show you, just goes on here. Boom. This goes over the top of it. Oh, I forgot something. This thing goes on top of it here. Put your screw down through your cover, down through the holes. Onto the carburetor, push it all down on there, tighten up the screw. Again, no Hercules. Okay, and I already told you, get this on the bike, put your carburetor on after that. We have the uh, Petcot is all 
good ready to go i'm going to put that on the tank first i'm going to get the carburetor onto the manifold and the slide back down in it and then i'm going to put the uh fuel line back on so now according to uh, adjustment on these this is what i'm going to show you for adjustment now i'm going to read this right from the original harley manual you can see it doesn't give you a lot of information it says uh for these carburetors uh it says close throttle it says idling speed of engine is adjusted with idle stop screw it says before which is number two which oop, is the longer skinnier one here it says before making this adjustment be sure throttle control coil wire now they, that's what they're calling it it's your throttle cable it is so adjusted that throttle is fully closed with outward handlebar grip movement so when your throttles not being turned at all it should the slide should fully close it says control coil wire your throttle uh, cable is adjusted by means of a a coil adjusting nut on the cap that goes on here where the slide is there's just an adjuster at the end of the cable and it's for taking slack in and out of it that's all that means okay next paragraph says turn screw to this one to the right for faster idling speed and to the left for slower idling speed that's basically all this screw does is adjust the speed of your rpms when the motor's running okay now it says engine should be at, at normal operating temperature before you adjust the screw but that's where i'm kind of puzzled it doesn't give me any base settings to set this carburetor at so that i know when i start it it's going to run and stay running to get the operating temperature so that i can fine tune it so this is my my deal it says on the 66 and later models which is this it says adjust the mixture screw for smooth idle at low speed now the mixture screw they're calling this one but actually the mixture is set by where you put the clip the clip on the metering pin when you look at the exploded version of this i'll show you that screw right here number 31 right here they're calling the idle adjusting speed screw wait a minute do i got the right one yes this is your speed screw number 33 number 33 they call your regulator screw so i guess it does regulate but it says what it's regulating is uh um the throttle slide that goes up and down in here so they're, they're telling you kind of that there's two different ways to adjust the mixture but that's not that's not how i see it so anyway um then it says on the 66 and later model which this is the mixture of gasoline and air entering the engine is controlled by the position of the metering pin uh in the piston which again i showed you before is this needle here it has this clip on it and this needle has four grooves in the top of it and you can move it up and down to adjust for leaning and richening the mixture according to your altitude now i don't know about everybody that's watching this but where i live it's 840 feet above sea level and they have that on the number two clip uh it was the same for the, for this other carburetor for the 125s and if i turn a couple pages it says the same it's the same for the 100 also cc um so i i'm going with that on the second clip i'm going to run it um as far as these go i'm going to tell you straight up that this bike has a thousand miles on it nobody ever messed with this carburetor the way it was adjusted when i took it apart i counted the turns before i took it apart this was all the way in the smaller screw here and it was turned out one quarter of a turn so quarter turn now this one screw it gently all the way down in just just till it snugs up and stops do not put any extra pressure on it 
because you'll ruin the point on the end of it and it won't meter right. Okay, so that one's all the way in. This one should be out three and a quarter. That's where it was adjusted from the factory. So we're going to go half a turn, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, whoop, three, and three and a quarter. Okay, three and a quarter, one, one quarter, that's it. Not one and a quarter, one quarter. And uh, that's it, you should be ready to rock and roll. This bike should start, run, just the way it did when it was bought. I know this bike was bought um, in Binghamton, New York, which is uh, 15 miles up the road, give or take. And uh, it went to a town just on the other side of that from us and the guy that owned it or the, the girl that owned it rode it never had issues with it never had to have it messed with so boom that's what we're going with so i'm giving you that information ahead of time saves you from monkeying around trying to have to adjust it move the clip up and down like i said we're at 840 uh foot in elevation you can gauge your where you live from that and uh time to go get this on the bike i'm gonna go put the manifold on that this on the tank i'm gonna slush them fresh gas around the tank or rinse that out before I put this on it get this on the manifold get that back on it and we should be ready to rock and roll then I'm going to be checking for uh, spark as long as we got gas spark and air we're going to get this thing to fire hopefully by the end of the week okay um, I know it's been two weeks since uh, I got the first video up on this Laguero I apologize for my tardiness I got a couple other videos out there, some shorts for you guys to check out. In the meantime, I hope that helped. Uh, I put up a video of a G20 conversion van that was my own that I did. If you want to check that out, there's a, there's only two videos on it. But, uh, you know, it turned out pretty cool. But anyway, okay, as always, be safe, be kind. Be good to each other. Keep the shiny side up. Live life behind bars. And I will get back to you as soon as this is on the bike. And we'll check for spark. See ya.